Hey everybody, it's Debbie O'Neill with Scribe Me Quick Designs and the Let's Learn Cricut Explore Facebook group. And today I want to talk to you about a new type of image that Cricut has created in Cricut Design Space called Dimensional Scenes. The very first one has been released and it is a nativity scene and it is beautiful. And I want to show you how do you find it and how do you use it because it is free if you have the, the Cricut Library subscription right now and I will show you how to find it in design space then we're going to actually cut the pieces out and put it together so that you know understand how to work with this type of dimensional scene image all right let's get started I've logged into my design space account and as you can see here the front page as usual is our Make It Now projects in Design Space. Now you'll notice right now the Christmas Nativity dimensional scene is one of the ones at the top, but it may not always be there. Um, so you would be able to find it here in the Make It Now projects. And I'm also going to show you how to find it in Design Space. So when it's not on this anymore, you can still find it. All right. So we want to click on this and now we're in make it now and in make it now if you haven't used any of that before what happens is these projects are already done and laid out for you you don't have to size them Cricut's given you directions on what do you need to make that project so this gives you a list of all the cardstock that they use to create these three beautiful projects it also uh, you can scroll through and look at each individual piece. This particular nativity scene has three pieces. Okay, so there's three sections. You'll see them down here. If you're subscribed, if you have a subscription to the library, you will see that they say subscribed. If not, you'll see that they cost you a certain amount of money to make them. Um, and... Uh, if you click the little project resources, the little eye there, it actually describes to you, you know, what is that particular image name, um, what's the image number, and also which uh, image set it comes from. All right, and that's true on any of the images. All right, so you can see what it looks like in and make it now. So I'm going to click make it now, and what it's going to do is it's going to go in and add and go ahead and create them all on the mats for you. So all you have to do is follow along and put your different colored pieces of paper on your mat and cut it out. And this will cut out all three of the scenes. All right. Now, let's say you don't want to do it through Make It Now. It's later and you can't you know, you you can you don't see it in Make It Now projects at the moment and you want to find it in Design Space. So you would go into Create a New Project and you want to hit insert images and you want to go to cartridges and then I'll pull it up here in a second there's a lot of them so it takes a second and then over here in the search you want to go in and put dimensional theme Okay, and now you'll see dimensional scenes. The nativity one is already loaded. It tells you that it's subscribed. There's a total of eight images. You'll see all eight of those images. Now, this is a layered uh, angel card, and it comes with a matching envelope, 3D envelope, and then it also is the same image, but as a drawing file on the front of a card all right so you would use a pen in your Cricut Explorer and draw onto the front of the card to make that image and then you have the three scenes these three that are in color here are the three three-dimensional scenes and then they each have a complementary drawing file so let's say you you wanted to make coloring pages for your Sunday school class or your kids or whatever um, I think it's really cool they've already got it set up so let's do this we're going to go ahead we're going to just I'm I'm going to show you how to put one of the projects together so we're going to work on them the, the the nativity scene uh, the manger all right and I'll go ahead and click the uh, drawing line so we can see what that looks like and then I'll also go ahead and let's talk about how to size that card all right so I'm going to do insert images 
It'll take just a second to get them all up. And you will notice that when they come into Design Space, they're small. That's okay. That's the way it's supposed to be. And then you need to size them. Now, Cricut recommends that um, you do them probably anywhere from six to eight inches so that as you're layering the different dimensions, they don't get too small on you. So you would just highlight the one that you want to change and then you want to leave it the lock on because you want it to do it proportionately so let's I'm going to go ahead and do mine at eight inches okay that's the way they have it sized in the make it now project so I'm going to follow along with that so you can see here's all the here's the image and then you'll see all the different layers that you're going to be cutting out in different colors of cardstock okay so you'll see that on there all right, so we're going to do that. Now, let's go ahead and look at the drawing one so you can see what that looks like. And I'll go ahead and put that, and let's say I'll do that one at six inches. Okay, now here is this same file, but they've made it into a writing file. So when I go to my layers panel and I have that highlighted, it's going to tell you the Holy Family Nativity draw because it's going to use the pen to draw the shapes. So it's going to draw this onto whatever paper that you want to put it on, okay? It's not going to cut it out, it's going to draw, okay? So it would draw it on a piece of paper and then you could use that as a coloring page or whatever, so that's kind of fun, but we're not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna click off of that and now we're gonna talk about the card. Now when the card and the envelope come in together, this is how you can size it. You want to leave it grouped. That's the first way you can do it. Let me make two here. Duplicate it. So I'm just going to take that image and I'm just going to duplicate it because I'm going to show you two different things to do with it. All right. So the first way you can do it is you can just grab the little handle here and drag it out so that it stays proportionate. Now, how do you know what size card you're going to end up with? Well, that's when the ruler up here comes in handy. Okay. So let's say I want this to be four and a quarter inches wide. So I would drag it until I'm only looking at where the card length on here is going to be on my card. So one, two, three, four, and I'm pretty close, four and a quarter. Okay, I'm just kind of eyeballing the lines up here, all right, on the ruler. So this card would be one, two, three, four and a quarter inches this way. And then if I wanted to know what the dimensions are going to be when I fold this card in half, because it already has the score line on it. And when you work with cards in design space, a lot of times they're already flat, open. And um, so you'll see the score line. So I know that this card will be one, two, three and a quarter. Um, when it's folded in half, it'll be three and a quarter by four and a quarter, all right? If you wanted to make it a larger card, if you wanted to make it five inches you know, wide or whatever, you can certainly do that using this. Now, when I do this, when it's grouped together, that means that when I cut this card out and put it together, it will fit within this envelope. Now, I want you to notice on this envelope, it is, it has double lines on it in the center here where the fold lines are. That means that this is going to fold so it's not completely flat. It's going to have a little bit of an edge to it so that you're going to be making a dimensional image with your angel. So you want a uh, envelope that has enough uh, width to be able to hold that. And I'll, I'll uh, do a video on making the card here for y'all shortly. Today though, we're going to work on the nativity scene. Now, so that's how you can size the card and that's how that's one way you can do it. The other way you can do it is, I'm gonna go ahead and just drag these so they're a little bit bigger. You can go ahead and ungroup this. Okay, I'm gonna move the envelope off to the side for a minute. So when I ungroup them, all right, now I want to group this image. All right, so I did that and I'm gonna go over here in my layers panel and I'm gonna click group. Okay, so now this is all together. Now I can size this image separately. So I can go over here to my edit panel and let's say I want this card, I want this card to be um, five, five inches with this way, one, two, three, four, five. And then it is going to be one, two, three, four, um, 
because that's about where the where the line is all right so i can change the dimensions of the card i can unlock this and i can make it so that i want it to be five let's see i'm going to do it seven i'm going to do seven okay so now i'm going to make it a five by seven card okay so when you look at this i'm going to lock that back up here when you look at this this card is going to be seven inches across and it's going to be if we line this up we should count five okay one two three four five right here where the fold line is so it'll be a five by seven card all right now how do we size that on the envelope after we ungroup it pretty simple what we're going to do is we're going to stretch out this envelope and I'm going to go in here and I'll make that a little bit smaller with my scale okay I'm going to take this card and I am going to keep moving the envelope and the card together until that envelope fits that card's going to fit just inside where those fold lines are this is a way you can do it with any of the cards so and the part that i'm looking at is where the fold lines are on the on the envelope and where the edges of my card are when, before it gets folded in half right because i already have the mark here all right so that looks pretty good to me that on um, that card will fit in this envelope i can make it just a little bit bigger Okay, so the card, so this card, when it's folded in half, will fit inside this envelope. All right, so that's another way that you can do it when you're working with the cards. I'm going to work on the nativity scene right now, and I will work on the card later. Okay, so you'll go into, um, you know, working on the image. You'll hit go. It's going to send it to the mat. It's already going to split it out into all the different layers that you'll need. To be able to create the nativity scene the with the mary and joseph okay the holy family they said all right the next thing i'll do is i'm going to get the papers ready get this all cut out and then i'm going to assemble the nativity scene for you so you can see how you layer it okay the next step in the process to make the dimensional scenes would be to pick out your colors now for the nativity scene cricket has listed 14 different colors that they used to create the images that you see in the make it now projects okay and that's how they have them colored the different pieces are colored when you, you just use it in design space all right so to make this a little easier for you what i've done is i have selected colors that are close to my heart colors that match up and I match each color close to my heart color with the colors that Cricut has suggested that we use to make that because I know trying to get a million different shades of all these browns and beiges and creams and so forth is crazy. Um, so what I've done is this entire row here where my finger is running that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That is eight of the 14 colors. These colors all come in the close to my heart basics package, okay, of our card stock. Um, and then we have the cream is a separate color that you could purchase. And we also have um, the the blues and the yellows are from our adventure pack and our whimsy pack okay so uh, those three sets basic adventure whimsy and then our cream color those would give you all the colors that you see here that would coordinate to match the cricket colors that they're suggesting for that nativity scene if you're interested in purchasing the paper sets uh, please let me know i'm a close to my heart rep i'll put that link in the in the list of all the colors that i use from close to my heart in the description of the video and if you want to purchase from me uh, it would be awesome now i'm going to be cutting these and then i will be doing this simply so stay tuned for that okay now that we've cut out all of our pieces which you see all the pieces right here where you see my hand moving across i've got all the pieces cut out from the nativity um, dimensional scene 
and you're going to need a few supplies to put this together. So you will need some type of adhesive. I'm going to use a Zig two-way glue pen to layer some of the pieces together, um, to adhere them together, all right? And then I'm also going to have a pair of my um, microtip scissors by me because I may need to cut some of the craft foam into smaller pieces. So I want to have that. And I like to use the microtip um, scissors that have the Teflon coating on them so that when I'm cutting craft foam or adhesive or whatever, it doesn't stick to these. So these are close to my heart ones and I love them. I use them all the time. And then you will also need some type of 3D adhesive foam, pop dots. Okay, they're talking about foam pop dots in the direction. So uh, these are forever in time ones. I buy them online. Uh, they come in a variety of sizes. This is the quarter inch size. Um, you get 528 pieces of these, and I think they were like a dollar for, for 528 little foam squares. Anyway, um, I can look this up and post a link to this too in the description of this video if you guys are interested in buying foam. So these come in circles. They also come in larger squares. So I usually have, and they also come in the foam tape. So it's very economical. And then of course you can also buy it at um, Close to My Heart sales, uh, strips of foam tape, and, and then uh, the craft stores also have foam tape. So whatever you want to use, but you will need some smaller pieces to be able to put this together. So when you're looking at what foam you want to get, you want to make sure that it's going to fit within the edges of your uh, frame because it'll make it easier to use it. And these little quarter inch ones fit. I'll just put one here just to show you. They fit perfectly within the frame. So that's why I'm just going with these. Okay, so that's what you'll need to put this together. So that's pretty simple. Um, now, there are probably a million different ways where you could layer this thing together because there's so many great layers. What I've done is I have broken it down into one, two, three, four, five, six layers so that when I put this together, I'm going to be pop dotting layers on top of each other to give it that extra dimension. All right. So if you want to layer your slightly different, feel free. I'm going to show you the way that I have decided to layer it. Um, so there's really no right or wrong to this. You just want to make sure that the images when you're stacking them make sense so that you can see all of the layers. Okay, the first thing you're, you'll start with is your, your whatever color blue, the dark blue that you've used for your background piece, and then you'll want to have the star, all right? So I'm just going to use my Zig two-way on this because this piece needs to be adhered to the back, okay? And you can see I'm just adding, I'm using this Zig two-way glue pen because there's lots of little strips here and it gets smaller and wider and I wanted something that I had a lot more control. And as you can see, I'm able to do the little pieces with this. Now it goes on blue and when it dries, when it, when it starts uh, drying, it, it gets clear, okay? So while it's blue, it's still repositionable. Once it turns clear, it is ready to be permanent onto your project, okay? So I'm going to, I want all these little tips. Okay, so I've got, I've got all of this. I've glued it here and here across the little tips of the star and I've glued it down the sides, all right? This piece on the bottom will line up across the bottom of your project, all right? So I'm going to lay on this part of the star, all right? Now, the star comes in three pieces. So you'll have the, the light yellow will be your background. Then you'll cut out a dark yellow color, and that's going to be the center of your star. And then you have a lighter yellow that goes on top of this. So the small one and this one I'm going to glue together using my Zig Two-Way. And 
I'm just I love this thing because I can get it on all those little tips works really good I'm gonna pick this up and I'm going to go ahead and glue this onto the center of my star all right so now I have that small piece glued onto this piece. Now this piece, I'm going to use the pop dot and pop this piece up on top of the background layer. All right, so here we go. I'm just going to use, I'll probably put a, just one of these on here. It will be perfectly fine. That's all I really need to pop this up and add a little dimension to the back of it. And then I will line it up on top of the background star okay so now you'll see this is popped up can you guys see that let me turn it so the camera so you can see that it's it's popped up on the back here okay so that's our background piece now the next piece we want to put together will be these two pieces so this is kind of I guess it's like the the background of the sand and so forth so these two pieces you will layer together all right, so I'm just going to use my Zig 2A here. Let me make sure I have these so that they're going to line up correctly. I think it goes like this. It's hard when you take it off the mat. <laughs> anyway, okay, so I'm just going to add my Zig 2A because these two layers are going to be glued together. I'm not going to use the foam dot on them separately. I have elected to do them where these two layers will be glued together to create that next layer that then we will foam dot on top of the background layer. Okay, there again, it's your choice. You could make these dimensional on top of each other, but I decided this would be fine. I wanted it to have some stability. And now I will put foam dots and stick it on top of the background all right so that's our next thing so flip this over I'm going to use those little tiny squares and just kind of periodically I will put them on my project trying to make sure that I keep them within the border of my image here Let me put one up here at the top because I want to make sure that that will look good and I'll just do the same thing kind of on the other side. Okay, it really helps if you've already got this cut. If you don't, you could go ahead and take your strips if you have foam tape and go ahead and cut them into smaller strips before you start because as you do these different layers, it gets a little crazy. Now, I want to point out that on the corners, I want to make sure that on the corners of my project that I have stability there all right so I'm gonna line these up so that they're pretty even as even as I can I'm not going to stress about it okay so I want to make sure that these corners have support and I want to make sure this has support so I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more up here all right, and as we start layering on top of it, this will make sense why I wanted to add more support on these. All right, now all you have to do is take your little plastic waxy covers off of your foam dots here, pop dots. Usually I'm playing music when I'm doing something like this because it's a little bit tedious. Um, I don't know what, if you, if, I find having the TV on is distracting to me, but if I have music on in the background, that usually makes the task go faster, a little more pleasant. But I don't have music playing since I have you guys on the video, and I didn't want this to be distracting for you to have music playing. So, you just get to listen to me ramble. <laughs> okay so now I've got all the covers off of the foam so now it's sticky all right and then I want to take this and I'm going to line it up and I want to I'm going to start at the bottom with mine when I'm lining it up and it also helps you know doing this on top of my grid mat I can line 
the bottom of this up with my grid line so that I know that this is relatively square so it helps me when I go to line up the layers. Okay, so now this layer gets layered on top of this. All right, so now we have our first foam dotted layer. Okay, so there you go. Woohoo! All right, so we want to build the next layer, and the next layer is going to be this piece, then what looks like the wood part of the manger, okay, and our um, gray donkey that's going to go here, all right? So I'm going to layer these on here, adhere them rather. So I just flip this over. I'm just going to add some of my Zig 2A. You use whatever adhesive you want to use. I just find that these work really well. And I can get into these smaller pieces without having to change my adhesive. I want to make sure that this is flat and adheres to the bottom piece. So I'm making sure I get glue in all of those little pieces. Okay, so I've got this piece and now I'm going to layer it. So I want to make sure that these line up. Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, and then I'm going to just glue my donkey on here. Okay, so the donkey's going to be flat because the next layer is going to sit on top of it. Okay, so I didn't want to pop dot my donkey on here. So I've just added some adhesive to the back of him and I'm going to add the donkey to my background. Okay, so now this piece can be adhered on top of that piece. All right, so we're gonna put more foam dots on the back of this. And I'm showing you guys this in real time. If you wanna fast forward through the video, fine. Does not hurt my feelings one bit, but a lot of times people don't like it when I edit the video out too much because you wanna see what I'm doing exactly. So, and particularly for something like this, a lot of us have not done a lot of dimensional work before. Now, I want to make sure that this gets, has stability because it's a larger piece. So I'm going to make sure I also put some along the edges here around where this window cutout is, just so that it doesn't collapse when I start layering other images on top. So just use your best judgment on how many pieces you want to use. I may even put one here in the middle. These are so inexpensive, I, I don't mind feeling like I'm using too much. Okay, so I wanna put some around the edges here. Since this is a curved strip, um, it gets, it's hard if you uh, were using the longer strips of foam tape and trying to run that around the edges there. That's why I elected just to use the Okay, and that's probably way too many foam dots <laughs> now that I look at it. It's really dotted, but I want to put one up here because I need this to have some stability at the top. I'll put one there. Okay, five million foam squares. Maybe not five million, but close. The only thing about these little foam square things is that they have a lot of uh, static cling on them sometimes and so you'll get them stuck on things. My husband is constantly finds them kind of on the bottom of his socks in the winter. They seem to have extra cling during the winter time and they migrate out of my craft room to the family room. <laughs> So be warned. Don't be alarmed. It's not as bad as glitter, but they, it does travel. Okay, and if you, and if you lose where your place where you were taking them off, just tap your finger on it and you can tell if it's 
got the waxy covering on it still or if you uh, have already peeled it off okay I think I got the waxy covering off all this okay so now this piece is going to go on top of guess what the pe the the background that we're building okay so I'm gonna line this up again along the bottom edge here and then I want to layer this one I want to try to make sure, excuse my head if you see my head in the video, um, I want to make sure that this layer is layered on top. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to push down just to make sure that where it's supposed to be stuck, it's stuck. Okay, so now we have the next layer is layered on looks pretty good right it's looking pretty cool all right so now we want to the next layer is this one that that looks like the front of the manger okay so this layer I'm just going to use the foam dots and pop it up on top of this because I want this to look like the donkey standing back behind it and not and then it's not flat on here okay you could you could go ahead and just glue this down if you prefer it to look like that I decided I wanted to layer this piece up so there again like I said before you could you know use whatever layering you would like and I'm just gonna lay some of these on the back here and I want to make sure I get these posts here Da, 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 da. okay now this is just the first of many of these dimensional scenes that cricket the cricket designers have put together and when I was at the cricket office recently I got a sneak peek of a few of them and that was pretty exciting um, I think you're really gonna love some of the new ones coming out they'll have those out in 2016 now up here where we start getting in a little bit tighter pieces, uh, spaces rather. I am going to go ahead and use some of my, use my scissors and I'm just going to cut these in half. Okay, so I was worried about this showing a little bit along the edge here. So I've taken care of that by just cutting it in half and then I'll lay it on. And of course you got to make sure you, you get it back on the sticky side of it. Okay, I want to do that up here. Lay that kind of here. And this one almost went exactly where it was supposed to go. Okay, and I think I want to do one more. There we go. And I'm just going to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and just do this. I cut one too many. I didn't need that. Okay, so, and then I just trim these off as I start using it up because that little piece of paper bothers me when I'm doing it. Okay, so there again, I'm going to take the little wax, take the little wax pieces off of here. I wish I could tell you there was an easier way to do this, but I don't know of one. <laughs> and I love to add dimension to projects. So, if you have taken any of my classes with me, my online Cricut classes with me, or um, done Diva Days with me, and you've seen some of my projects that I work on, you know that I love dimensional foam. There we go. All right, so here we go. Now this layer layers on top of, that's right, the bottom layer. So I'm going to 
I want to line this up as best I can because I want it to have the right dimension. There we go. So it all looks pretty good. And now, and I don't care that this sticks out a little bit. I kind of want that post out in front. And I didn't want to put adhesive on that, so it's fine. It'll be great once we put the other layer on. You won't even notice. But now we've got the back layer, and we have one, two, three layers already. All right. Now the next piece that we're going to do, I don't want to lose little baby Jesus, so hold on a minute. Because <laughs> we're going to have to glue him down here in a second. Okay, so now you'll have the piece that looks like this that has um, Mary and Joseph on it, the background of the manger, and then you'll have this cover piece that goes on top of this. All right, so we're going to go ahead and adhere this to, to the back. I'm going to use the zig two way again. All right, and I'm going to lay, oops, I want to make sure this lays on top of that background very nicely so that we're not seeing any of that other color underneath it. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I want to add my, the, um, I guess this is supposed to be like the, okay, so I'm just going to glue that on. Now you could probably foam dot this if you want, but I've decided I'm just going to glue mine on. Okay, so, and it goes just right on top of the and you do see some of the wood behind it, so don't worry about that. Okay, so now I have this part done, and then I need to go ahead and add Joseph. We're going to go ahead and glue him on, and we're going to add him right here on top of where the outline is. So you'll have a separate piece that's Joseph that is a darker color cardstock that you cut. And yes, I use these a lot <laughs> for when I'm doing little intricate die cut layering like this. Okay. All right, so now we have Joseph on, and now this layer is going to go on top of this next layer. All right. So there again, we're going to need to put the foam pop dots on it. I'm going to make sure I get my corners down here so that we don't lose some stability along the edge there that we need. And we'll need to put some, oh, we don't need any Mary. Put this there. Okay, and I'm going to put some up here. That's probably good enough. Now I'm only going to show you these two, the um, the Mary and Joseph manger scene. There are three pieces to this nativity set. You would layer them just like this. Decide which pieces you want to actually uh, use the foam dots and pop up. I didn't want to bore you with the, the gory details of doing the other two pieces uh, because basically it is the same thing as this. Okay. All right. So I think I got all the looks like it. All right. So, yep, that's right. We're going to glue this on. 
going to add it on. So I'm going to line this up along the bottom again. Make sure that I have it even and then I'm going to press down my foam tape to make sure it's stuck down. Okay, now you see. You can see the layers. Okay, and you can start seeing the dimension here where you see the stack of the background, the next layer of the manger, the next layer of the manger, this layer that sh that now shows Joseph and Mary kind of laying out in front of where we've got the donkey inside the manger because they're kind of in front of the manger, I guess, at this point. Um, and now we're going to work on little baby Jesus and Mary. So there are several pieces to little baby Jesus. And here is Mary. The blue background and then there's a cream, the cream color. Okay, so this you're just going to add there again because I'm using these little tiny pieces. I cut this at eight inches. My manger is cut at eight inches. That's what um, Cricut kind of recommended when they put the uh, Make It Now project together. So that's what I did with mine is I cut it at eight inches. Okay, so you're going to just line that up. Okay, so Mary is now in this cream color and whatever the head covering is that, that she would be wearing. Okay, so now you see that. All right, so we have so we have Mary and then we need to put baby Jesus together. So now in the file they had um, little baby Jesus. And they had some hay, right? Because he lays in his hay in his manger. And there is, so there's little baby Jesus. There is his covering, okay? So his, what he swaddled in in the manger. And then, so we're going to lay, layer these two together. Now you do it how, whatever you want. I wanted to see a little bit more of baby Jesus than just his head sticking out. Because if you, if you glue it on, exactly perfectly all you're going to see is little baby Jesus's head in his arm I wanted to see a little bit more of baby Jesus laying there <laughs> so I'm gluing mine slightly down all right that's up to you you do it however you want I just felt like baby Jesus disappeared if I um, put too much covered him up too much and I wanted to see him And the three-year-old is very much into baby Jesus this year. She's been talking about him and talking about him. And that it's his birthday. Christmas is his birthday. So she, we're going to have a birthday cake for baby Jesus at Christmas this year. And I remember doing that when my kids were little. So it's kind of fun to see the granddaughter also doing that. Okay. All right, so I've glued baby G, the baby Jesus covering onto baby Jesus, okay? Now what I want to do is I'm going to, on the where the um, hay is, there is a little slit here. And you want baby Jesus to go so that he's laying inside of that slit, okay? So I'm going to just lay it like that. And then baby Jesus is laying here in the, main, in the hay. Now, on the design space file, they had the hay was the same color as um, Mary's dress. And I decided that hay needed to be yellow, so I just moved this piece in design space in the layers panel to in when I did sync. And I synced it up so it's yellow because to me hay should be yellow. So, um, and then I thought baby Jesus stood out a little bit more there. So since it's all about baby Jesus... Um, I wanted to make sure that we really saw him. So I changed mine to yellow. That's why mine may look different than yours. If you have already cut yours, don't worry about it. <laughs> but that's why mine is yellow. Okay, so I added a little bit of adhesive in front of where that slit is. And now I'm going to lay baby Jesus on there so that he stays in place. All right. 
and then this piece on top of, I mean, on top of his cradle, all right? So I'm just going to add some adhesive along, lay, I mean, the end on top of the cradle, and then lay that piece on top of it so that it sticks together, okay? And then little Mary's arm, there is cut out. You'll see that Cricut has cut that out. Can you see it? So I just kind of gently pulled that up because it is supposed to look like um, Mary is, you know, adoringly looking down at baby Jesus and she has a, her arm across the cradle. All right. So I'm going to now glue this onto this piece. There again, I'm just using the zig two way. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put baby Jesus here. And you kind of line baby Jesus up wherever you would like him on there. I kind of lined it up. I just wanted to make sure that Mary's arm was stuck there in front of him. Okay, and now I want to pop dot this piece in front here slightly. All right, so I'm going to add some foam dots to the to the front of mine, to the back of mine, sorry. Okay, add a few foam dots. And guys, we're almost through. I know this, this must be horribly tedious to watch, but you will now know exactly how to do this. Okay, I'll just do those in the middle here. I'm gonna turn that so you can't see it. I want to make sure it's not, the foam won't be seen from the side. Okay, so now I have Mary and baby Jesus assembled and foam dotted, and now I'm going to add it on top of there again because I wanted to give more importance to baby Jesus and Mary. And so now Mary is sticking out slightly in front of Joseph, if you can see that. Okay. All right. So that looks good. And because um, it's like he's standing behind her with his arm behind her. So she would be in front of him. So that's kind of where my thought process went there. And then we just need to pop dot the frame. And then we are done. So let's get that done so we can see it all assembled and all ready to go. And mainly it's just a matter of kind of determining how you want to layer your pieces and then laying them out so that you can just grab them and work on them as you go around. Okay. Like I said, there are the other two scenes that go with this set, nativity set. And you would do the same thing with them. Okay, I'm not going to show you how to make those. And okay, so I've got these on, and yes, we're going to do this. Almost. I can't wait to see it all put together. It looks so pretty in the picture, I just couldn't resist it. And I knew you guys were going to be asking me, how do you layer it? How do you put it together? So I'm working on the video, letting you guys know because I love you so. <laughs> okay. So now we're just going to, yep, you got it. We're going to layer this piece. Line that up so that everything will be nice and straight. Line that on the bottom, and that becomes our top piece. Okay, now there are two final touches. There are two little birds that need to be placed up here, and they are looking down, and so I'm going to add a little bit of my zig two way. Now, 
I think on the Cricut file, they had the birds synced up so that they were gray like the donkey. And I decided I wanted bluebirds, so I changed mine to a pale blue. Just because I thought that they would show up more and look a little bit nicer than just that gray color. And stand out from the donkey a little bit, since they're kind of over his head. Okay, so you can kind of put your birds where you want across the top, and now we are finished with our 3D nativity set. Okay, so looks pretty good. I'm really happy with it. It was easy to do once you just kind of go through the process of sorting the layers out and determining what layer you want to pop up and how do you make it work. All right, guys, have fun. I want, cannot wait to see what you've done with this. I know that a few people in the group, in the Let's Learn Cricket Explore group, have actually put these together and they made it into a card. They welded the three scenes and they, instead of pop dotting them up, they just layered them and put them together. And then they um, created a, a 3D card, which I think is a really cool idea too. So um, I cannot wait to see what you do with this. Hope you guys have a lot of fun. If you are watching me on YouTube, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss any future videos. And please come join us at the Let's Learn Cricket Explore Facebook group where we have a lot of fun uh, working with our Cricut Explorer and learning different things we can do in design space.